Yeah, Jerome is back and uh, healthy, new. Gimbal's fixed on Jerome. Uh, we're all happy to have him back. Uh, it was a sad day when he broke for the third time. Today we're gonna cover the three biggest questions that I get that are not gear or part centric, but more so as the build overall. Hopefully this time Jerome lasts longer than a day. Daily update. So the Kickstarter is going really well. We've been funded to $106. So we're that much closer. And I just want to throw a huge thank you out there to the supporter. Although I know you want to stay anonymous, but uh, just a huge thank you to you. Um, and I hope to see you on the trail. I'd say the first question that we get the most is, uh, why did we build on a Tundra? Yeah, so we already had the Tundra and, you know, buying another vehicle didn't seem like the best use of our money. The Tundra had the biggest cab at the time and we're a growing family. We had two little ones uh, when we bought the truck in 2018 and it just seemed like the best fit at the time for the family. I think the biggest downside to the Tundra holding 2,100 pounds seems to be the C-channel framing because when we step up into the heavy duty trucks, uh, everything seems to be fully boxed uh, from front to rear, and they're a lot more rigid. So that was one of the concerns that we initially met within the build itself was reinforcing the framing at and behind the rear axle to stiffen it up and beef it up. And that's why we have the cross brace back there. But to answer the question of why we went to Tundra, well, it's basically because we already had it. And that really rolls into the next question that we get. How does the truck handle the weight? More specifically, how does the truck handle the weight when we're driving? Because that's the real deal. We can make the truck handle the weight no problem with a few suspension upgrades and this and that. And we can upgrade the framing and then we're basically ready to roll. But when you're rolling down the road, how does it roll? And if you followed me before, like on Instagram, you would know that if it can't handle well, why have it set up like that at all? Now the truck handles incredibly well. If you asked me that question, the first day I got the camper put on the truck, I would have told you that I completely regret my decision to put that much weight on the rear axle of a Tundra. The first time I had the camper put on the back of the truck, I wanna say I didn't even have a sway bar on the back of the truck, right? So mistake number one. Uh, number two, just having a, the leaf springs in there. We didn't quite have what we were gonna do worked out yet. On the good side, we already had the leaf springs built up. And when the camper went on the truck, you can see the truck sag about three and a half or four inches. Back end was sitting about two inches negative of where it should be. Strike number three, uh, I didn't have the tires at the correct air pressure. I think I had like 35 or 38 PSI in the rear tires uh, when I had the camper put on the truck. So that was mistake number three. Back then, the truck on the freeway was a sloppy mess. I was extremely worried about how sloppy and loose the driving was. Um, and the first thing that we did was we put a rear sway bar back on the truck. The rear sway bar did settle some of the sway that we were having in the truck initially. Obviously it didn't help with any lift and it was still pretty loose around the corners, especially with that much weight. And we used the beefiest aftermarket sway bar that we could get for that truck. Having the sway bar on there did give us enough ability to drive it from Redding to Las Vegas, where we had the rear air shocks built up. And once we had the full tune, the road mannerisms were a million times better, but kind of was underwhelming. The truck seemed to want to jump over bumps. So we would hit a speed bump and the front end would want to pop up on us. And I was just like, man, I just can't believe it that the weight is really affecting it that much because we had everything has moved as far forward as we could. I've had it on the cat scales. I know what the rear axle weighs. I know what the front axle weighs. And the rear axle, surprisingly enough, is only about 1,800 pounds heavier than the front axle. So it's not so much that it should make the front of the truck jump. So the next step, I just went ahead and got an alignment and getting a proper alignment with the camper on the truck alleviated all of the issues that I was having with the front wanting to jump 
and then any instability that was left with the truck was completely muted. And now if you ask me how the truck handles on the highway, it's incredible. It's smooth, it doesn't wiggle wobble, uh, it holds tight in corners, the rear end doesn't flutter anymore. Everything is perfect now, it's, it's incredible. And we've had the truck in snow, sand, beach, dunes, uh, four-wheeling and rocky terrain, and, and we've been mudding. And, and I, I guess one of the biggest things, one of the biggest downsides to how it actually handles is that it's heavy. So when you're on like side hill on sand or something, it, it wants to slide down. But I think that's, you know, that's a fairly common thing no matter what kind of vehicle you have. It's just, you know, it's more about like maintaining a speed through a bank like that. Now when people ask me, hey, should would it be a good idea to put a flatbed on a Crew Max Tundra and do it again? I would be like, heck yeah, do it again, because it's great, it's phenomenal. I love it. Did the modifications that I made to the truck make mine an exceptional vehicle? Yes. Do you need all the modifications that I did for your vehicle to make it exceptional for your needs? Probably not. The last question that I get is, uh, how much did it cost? I don't respond to that, like rarely ever. I'll usually say something like, well, the cost and the price are two different items. And if you start calculating how much you paid for it versus how much intrinsic value it provides to you, then you would understand that the price that I paid for it is minuscule compared to the memories that I'll gain. A pash. So that's like my general go-to when people ask me how much I paid for it. But uh, if you'd like to know how much it cost for the vehicle and the price I paid for it, uh, leave me a comment down below and that's something that I can start developing. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight. I will howl at you later.